so many different ways to find balance. We have to really know ourselves in order to know which way you need to balance those scales. So this session today is based on one of your requests. It's hailing outside. I don't know if you can hear that. It's very stormy. But that's providing some nice yin and yang energy. This cold, kind of stormy weather outside combined with this really gentle, very warm energy inside of our Reiki. So one of you had requested a session on finding balance. I think balancing our yin and yang energies is a great place to start, great kind of foundation for achieving that alignment in our lives. So that's what we're going to do. We have lots of little tools here. We'll play around with those. And I'll be doing some work in your aura, your subtle energy bodies. But this work is really going to be extended into your life so that you can start asking yourself questions about which direction you're maybe leaning more in so that you know how to correct and sort of find that balance within yourself. But this takes a lot of courage because it takes a lot of honesty when we're asked to really look at ourselves boldly and see how we behave, what kind of activities we're engaging in, what kind of thoughts we're believing, we might start to arrive at the realization that we're not actually living in harmony with what we want. So opening ourselves up to a new possibility, a new way of doing things, can be really, really powerful and transformative. So I do have a few crystals to support transformation here. I think some of them are stones I don't use very often, so that'll be fun. Very often here in these sessions. <laughs> How are you doing today? Okay. Well, as always, I hope that by the end of the session, you feel at least 10% better. So in order to kind of look at these yin and yang energies, I wanted to look at two of our sort of celestial healers, the sun and the moon. So we could say that the sun is a very a yang energy, and the moon is a very yin energy. For those of you who are kind of new to yin and yang energies, yin energy is easy to connect to when you think about the moon. You know, there's a darkness, there's a kind of stillness, you know, nighttime invites a sense of stillness and peace. If you're into archetypes, then yang would be a more divine masculine energy and yin would be a more divine feminine energy. But I know those kinds of archetypes can be a little bit problematic. So really looking at the yin and yang energy in terms of those properties, right? So yang energy on the other hand is like the light of the sun. Bright, vibrant, commanding. It wakes us up. There's growth and like it's, it's very active, right? Whereas yin is a little bit more restful, restorative.
restorative, peaceful. You may have heard of yin and yin yoga. I don't think I've ever heard of a yang yoga class, but if any of you are yogis, let me know if that's something that actually exists. Usually I've only been to a yin yoga class. I think you'd probably, like hatha yoga is pretty young. There's a lot of yoga that's very, has that kind of young energy that's very like warrior, powerful kind of thing. But the sun is so, so powerful. You know, it's around the sun that we all spin. So that sort of like power, that's the energy of the young aspect is just very, very powerful, active. So that can be helpful just to think about when we're thinking about these different energies. And then yin is gentle, more subtle, restful. And so as we begin to kind of lean into this session and give over to this session from wherever you've come from today. Maybe you're just starting your day or maybe you're just closing your day off. Maybe you're having a little midday pick-me-up. It's helpful just to kind of start to recognize where you are here. So where are you? And always feel free to share in the comments how you're feeling and what you got going on and which aspect you're leaning into more. But with our young energies, this can be if we're out of alignment and we're going too far in the direction of our young energy, then there's a strong chance that we are perhaps maybe from the sort of negative aspects, feeling overwhelmed. Maybe you were taking, saying yes to too many people and so we're leaving a lot of disappointment maybe in our wake. Maybe the young energies when we're very focused on self and some of you are not so focused on listening and receiving. You know, our dominant aspect, we are young. So maybe we're putting too much out there with our receptive and dominant hands. You know, if you're right-handed, then your right hand is your dominant hand and your left hand would be receptive and vice versa. If you're left-handed, your left hand would be that young energy, that dominant hand. And that's how we give energy. We give energy with that. And then with our receptive hands, yeah, we receive, we receive energy. So when we're looking at these aspects, we want to be able to open ourselves up to the truth of where we are. So maybe you're giving a lot, giving, putting out, you got a lot of output. But maybe you're not really open to receiving much input. So maybe you're really fixated on a goal and you're just, there's no jogging. It's like you're sprinting, you're all out sprinting towards this goal. A lot of ex, ex uh, <laughs> a lot of exertion and a lot of I almost combine those two into like a very strange word, ex effort. <laughs> um, anyway, so. <laughs> Before we get too much farther into this, I have a really nice blend here. In this blend, I have chamomile and cedar wood. Did I say sandalwood? I meant cedarwood. Um, so the cedarwood is really, really balancing. It's kind of that like base balance. And then we have the tea tree. That's just like top note. 
that's going to be really punchy. It's the first thing you notice. So yeah, that'll be our yang energy. And then the chamomile is this sort of warm, honey-like kind of fragrance. That'll be the mid note. This is our moon, moon spray, which just means that it's charged in the light of the moon. But for this, I mean, most of the time, to be honest, when I make moon spray, I leave it out, usually on my windowsill, or I have a little skylight, and I'll leave it out there in the light of the full moon, or in the darkness of the new moon, depending. And I usually leave it out because I forget, <laughs> so, you know, I, d I don't, you know, come up straight away. So it gets charged in both the light of the full moon and in the sun. So it automatically has that kind of balance between the two, right? But this time it was intentionally done. I left it all night and all day so that it has this really beautiful balance of that yin and yang. So it's really, really nice. It's a great it's a great way to kind of get the energy to a place of kind of that foundation of harmony and balance. Oh, I love this one. <laughs> it's really nice. Okay. So back to what we were saying as I spritz you here. When you are having that kind of really dominant Go, go, go. Maybe you're seeing, if you're not as aware, you're sensing that people seem a little annoyed with you. Maybe people aren't texting you back. Maybe people are um, being, their responses to you seem a little bit agitated. Or you are getting some feedback that's like, I feel like you're not listening to me. <laughs> that could be an indication that the scales are leaning too much in the direction of yang energy. So let's take that as our first, our first balancing here. Because in our life, it'll sort of go like this. It's very likely that we'll sort of shift back and forth depending on the season. So if this is the case, there are obviously so many different ways of balancing. But we want to invite, no matter what, we want to invite more yin energy. And how we do that is really dependent on the way you work. What, what are your inner cycles? What feels good for you? What feels super empowering? When you're at your most relaxed, what does that look and feel like? So some people, and sometimes, to find that balance, we sort of strive for this continual balance. So we're sort of in that process of balancing, moment to moment. And by that I mean, when we sense our yang energy coming in, we're aware of it, really practicing mindfulness, and we say, oh, okay, let me just correct, and recognize that even though I'm being pulled to say, you don't have time to relax right now, you're not contributing. You have this inner voice or this inner critic that's giving you all kinds of feedback and saying things like, oh, no, 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 no. You need to be out there. This is a moment wasted if it's not a minute spent working. Things like that. I need to call this person. I need to do this thing. If I'm not doing these things, then I'm not living up to my potential. Then what we, we want to do is it's not about stopping that action, stopping, you know, just going to a place of constant stillness. But it is about, you know, if you're one of those who's wanting to do this moment thing, what you could do is, as you lean into that, you sense yourself being pulled in that direction, moment to moment you just gently say, oh, okay, I'm going to recognize that that's a choice that I can make, and for now I'm going to make a different choice. And I'm going to choose instead to be here, somewhere in the center. 
so that we're sort of striving for that continuous kind of balance, right? That might sound sort of obvious, but the sort of opposite or a different way to practice this or find that alignment and balance is to really like spraying all around you. It's going to be lovely. It smells so good in here. Would be to recognize that we have seasonal shifts. So right now I'm in a season of young energy. That's the season that I'm in right now. I'm in a season of go, go, go. I'm in a season of, you know, really intense action. And that's where I am. Trusting that a shift will happen and that you will find yourself in a season of yin energy. And so, kind of giving over to the balance that happens like this. The most important thing here, no matter how we're choosing or whether a path is chosen for us, right, internally, our kind of inner knowing, or whether we're actively saying, this is what I'm going to do, this is how I'm going to do this. The most important thing is not to invite shame. So, sometimes when we shift into the yin energy, and we really give over to that, especially, I find, if we're doing it in a more seasonal kind of pattern, then during those times, we can feel a lot of external pressure. A lot of external pressure. Maybe people saying, like, are you okay? What's going on? It feels like you're not, you know, you're not doing, you know, whatever, you're not, you know. And just recognizing that for those who we're really close with and who we trust and who we're really deeply connected with and who, have, who are willing to understand us or try to understand us, you know, those close, close people that we treasure in our lives, we can explain to them, you know, I'm in a season of rest right now. I'm in a season of recovery right now. I'm in a season of rejuvenation and, you know, I'm in a very restorative time right now. And, you know, that, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. We really pride ourselves on this go, go, go. It's really emphasized in our society. Culturally, it's really emphasized in the West. Action. Go, go, go. But in reality, you know, it's so, so valuable. Just as productive. <laughs> Although that's not the intention. But it's just as productive to rest. I mean, y'all know I feel this way. I say that in like every session that we do here. Yeah. <laughs> rest is productive. Rest is productive. Let yourself up the hook, you know? So that's kind of the idea. With balancing your... your yang energy, right? You can either do it moment to moment. Oh, hey, I'm sensing that I'm doing a little bit in this direction. I'm going to shift back. Oh, and then... The other direction of Shinsa. Okay, we're just going to shift back like this. It's all about this sort of how do you like to spend your time, what your habits are, how do you like to engage with things. You know, a lot of us are kind of all or nothing people. We go, you know, we don't do things by halves. And so we really put ourselves out there and we like doing all or nothing. And a lot of people would say that that's not helpful or healthy, but I actually think there's a way to find balance within that. And it's just about listening to your own internal rhythms. So if that's how you operate, where you're just like, okay, right now I'm in a go, go, go period, trusting that I'm going to pump the brakes and be in a restful period and season next. And then it'll flow back, you know. So now let's talk about the yin energies. Um, if you are maybe feeling really lackadaisical, maybe you find that it's really difficult 
to motivate. Maybe you're finding that you've been like no, not really living up to your potential and also not really engaging with the idea of worthiness. Maybe you're feeling very mm, timid. Maybe you feel very disconnected from your, your confidence and your sense of self-assurance. Maybe you're feeling really low energy, just sort of lackluster, you know? Maybe, maybe even a little bit pessimistic, maybe a little bit of kind of an Eeyore energy. So you just want to like scoop your up and give them a big hug. But that, if you're feeling that, if that's kind of where you are, then chances are we want to swoop that over to some young energy, balance in that direction. So if you're feeling really tired, if you're constantly, you know, fatigued for a season, obviously, I know there are always check with a medical professional, you know, this work is only meant to complement your you're you know, seeking professional medical guidance here. Never meant to substitute. Always a compliment. But if you're feeling just sort of like blah, not inspired, a little lackluster, dusty, let's say, then we want to really activate, amp things up. Get you feeling like nice and sparkly and shiny again, right? So we can do this in the exact same way. So moment to moment, you can make these decisions that are about coming back into alignment. So let's say that you have a choice. I'll give you a couple of examples. So let's say you get invited to go for a hike with a friend. But you feel like you could also play on the couch and watch more Reiki with Anna YouTube. <laughs> you can, you know, take it easy, chill out. If you're looking to balance your yin energy, if you're a little more yin dominant, then what you want to do if you're doing that moment-to-moment -moment thing is just going, okay, I'm going to say yes to that today, even if I don't want to, just because I know it's going to bring me more into alignment. And once we start to resonate with that, once we start to kind of practice that, we develop a sense of momentum, and it does get easier, and it will start to balance those energies. So I have this beautiful shivalingam, and this is a stone that's associated with balancing yin and yang energies. So we're going to move this through your aura here. Very beautiful stone. I love this one. So we're just starting with this very kind of general crystal healing, creating a sort of foundation here of balance. And now, if you are drawn more towards seasonal shifts, then you can look at, okay, I'm in a season of rest, and that's okay. That's the healthiest thing I can do right now is give over to this season. And knowing yourself well enough to know that giving over to it as a season, you know, and you, you know, it can shift. It's sort of, you could do, I'm going to do maybe a week or two of rest. And then I'm going to take action for a week or two. And then I'm going to shift to, or maybe you do six months where it's just you taking things easy. You're not signing up for big projects or traveling or anything. You're just you're taking it easy for a little bit. It's up to you, but the most important thing with this is knowing yourself and being intentional about how you're going to choose to move through this. Because if you're watching this, chances are you are finding some kind of an imbalance. Heck, most of us have, you know, an imbalance when it comes to yin and yang energies. But once we're intentional about it, that's the thing that matters most. So knowing how you operate, the way in which you find balance, 
in the way in which you feel most comfortable finding that center for yourself. That's going to be the important quest here for you. So that's your homework. Okay. I'm going to place this right at your heart space, okay? Our beautiful Shivalina, right there. So we spoke about the importance of intentionality. And now I'd like to light our candle and set our intention here. I wanted to do a nice little background before we did that, just so that you have a clear idea. Usually when it's put in that way, it's pretty easy to determine in what way you need to sort of lean. In what direction you're kind of lacking and you need to shift. So which, which way do you think you're leaning more? More yin or more yang? And which direction do you need to head? It's good to know. It's a really valuable thing to know. We can't know how to heal until we know where we are. so strange. This was melted like that. And this was like resting on top of it. But it wasn't upside down. Curious and curious. Okay. So set our intention on this candle. Mm. We can't really see the flame very well because of that, but that's okay. So, on behalf of your highest, wisest, most empowered and aligned self, in loving comfort and in perfect balance, I wish to conduct this session for balancing your yin and yang energies. Now I'd like you to take a moment, maybe even place a hand on the heart space, and take three really slow but intentional deep breaths, but slow, okay? I'm going to hold my hand outside of your heart space. So we're both sort of sending energy into the, seven, the center of our seven primary chakras, our heart space, our heart chakra. So that's sort of promoting that balance. It's getting into that center. Anyway, I want you, on your third breath, to just think about where you are. And then just either say to yourself or aloud, I wish to balance my yin energy or I wish to balance my own energy. Knowing whether, oh, I'm in a super go, go, go phase, I wish to balance my yang energy. Oh, I've been really lackadaisical really, I haven't been very confident, I've been feeling very insecure, I need to balance my yin energies. Okay, there's the flame if you wanted to set your intention there. Okay, beautiful. Now I'm going to come in with a few stones. is very yang energy and one of them is very yin energy. So we have this malachite stone of transformation. It's associated with the heart chakra. This is a rhodonite associated with the heart chakra. Very yin energy. Acceptance, forgiveness, unconditional love. Right? Also associated with the heart chakra. So two different kind of stones. And so we're balancing with these two stones. So moving through and providing a natural balance. Right? 
So in the same way that we could balance moment to moment, we're going to be balancing in that way. Like right here, right now, we're providing a general balance for you. If I was to use one stone at a time, that would kind of mimic the seasonal balancing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do these together here. So windy. So. Another aspect to consider here, it's just sort of interesting, is that sometimes we feel very lackluster, very lackadaisical, very, um, sort of based on the description that I gave, very, we feel very, like a very yin energy, but we also feel very tethered to our to-do lists, and we feel so much shame about not you know, not doing things, or really struggling with our confidence, but we're also like trying really hard to do something and maybe doing a lot in terms of effort, but we're not, you know, we're just constantly feeling tired and drained. If that's the case, then you really want to invite in a sense of, you know, kind of like integrated balance. You want to be doing this kind of more consistent shifts and being really intentional about it. So saying like, okay, I'm going to take time right now to do something that's really life-giving and restorative for me. So I'm going to take a moment and cuddle with my cat or take my dog for a walk out in nature, even though I have like a to-do list of 30 things. My wings are locked. I'm going to cuddle with my cat. And then the next minute, okay, I'm going to dedicate 45 minutes straight to knocking the things off my to-do list. I'm going to get up, stretch, do another 45 minutes straight of knocking off my to-do list. And then I'm going to do 45 minutes of something really relaxing, maybe taking a bath or whatever it is. But you're going to want to really be conscious moment to moment of what's going on. And again, the most important thing here is not inviting shame. So you don't want to invite any shame. Let me push this a little farther away because it might be a little too much for you. So I'm using both of these stones to draw the sacred symbols. other stones. I mean, I have three, but two other different kinds of stones. This is an androdite and clinical art. Really matches the vibe in this room, I feel like. Color eyes. It's a beautiful stone. So androdite and clinical art is associated with masculine energies. And then I have two little selenite sticks. Selenite is associated with the moon because it's associated, it's named after Selene, the goddess of the moon. It's got a very lunar energy, it's got a very you know, yin energy. So we're going to take these and then similarly we're going to Invite a sense of balance here. 
using both of them. So, angiodite and clinical is, is can be great for balancing uh, maybe relationships with men in your life, maybe toxic relationships with men in your life. Um, it can be associated with getting a sense that maybe some of you are responding here strongly to that. So maybe some of you have some healing to do when it comes to men in your life. So I think the androdite is going to be really helpful for that. It could be like a parental thing, like a father figure. Mm. So we're just trying to find this balance. And using these selenite sticks on, it's also great for clearing. We're sort of cleansing now, cleansing and cleaning. Beautiful, beautiful. The one thing I would just encourage you to do is just try things out. There's no right answers. You know, some I get so many messages and people asking me about like what should I do? What's the correct answer? What's the right thing to do? And it's like, that's part of the journey is to find what's where your inner wisdom guides you. Because it's all for a purpose. It's all, you know, worst case scenario for many decisions is that you'll learn a lesson. Right? So, it's, it's so valuable and so important to recognize that nothing is forever for good or ill nothing is forever you know the good times and the bad times too shall fade and so it's important just to recognize that being present being right here right now is all there is and so you take what you have right now and you just make all of your decisions in your life based on what you know now the resources you have available to you, the knowledge you have access to, where you are, how you're feeling, what's going on, and that that's how you'll grow. That's how you'll grow is by, you know, trying things out, testing it, using this as like a testing ground to get to know yourself better. I'm going to close and seal this session with a combination of two different rattles. Rattles are great for vibrational healing. So we're going to use this owl rattle. Very sweet. It has a very gentle, very yin energy to it. Owls are associated with yin energy. They're very, you know, they come out at night. Actually, I want to show you an owl, the owl that's on my property. I have an owl on my it's a barred owl, and there's a barred owl who lives on my property, and she flew up right near me uh, the other day when I was working. She flew up right outside the window. It was so cool. It's pretty cool, right? So then we also have this rattle. This is a fairy. This is a seed rattle. It's very loud, very harsh, very intense and I love it. It's so great for just like shaking up the energy. So these two rattles have a very opposing kind of energy. Very young, very yin, really nice and so I'm going to use them together here. Okay.
three slow deep breaths here. Take a moment in stillness. You are divine. You are connected. You are expressive. You are loved. You are strong. You are creative. You are safe. I was going to associate yin and yang energies with different chakras. I would say yin energy is very sacral. Very Svadhisthana chakra. Very womb-like cocoon <laughs> and yang energy is very solar plexus solar sun confidence worthiness productivity boop, boop, boop. sacral you know creativity uh, uh, sense uh, connecting to your senses uh, experiencing the sort of gentler side of things, emotions, that, that kind of thing. <laughs> okay, my dear, thank you so much for joining me. As always, it is just such a pleasure to be able to connect with you here. I'm sending you so much love and support. Um, thank you to everyone who has purchased my book. You know, it's a book of meditations. It's called self Love: a month of meditations. And so if you are feeling like you want to connect more with your with your yin side, a meditation practice for 30 days could be really helpful if you are going into a season of yin. So that's really great. And it's um, it's an orange book. I didn't really think about it like that. It's just one of my favorite colors is orange. Um, so it's it's got that kind of sacral quality to it. But yeah, thank you for all of your kind reviews on my book. And yeah, it's just been so, so lovely. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day or your night, okay? Take really good care of yourself. Take good care of each other. And until we meet again, be so well, okay? <laughs> Namaste.